Bring up this argument of women don't choose their salaries, neither do men. The point is the wage gap that you are bringing up. And I'm saying that in a world where there is there a There is no manager, wage gap, though. There's no wage gap. I said in a world that the manager is sexist, not just in general and every And in a world where there's a female sexist manager, she's also discriminating against men. And do you think that's common? Yes. Women make up the majority of HR departments. They, hi they handle hiring. And you think men are discriminated against? Yes. Because they're not hiring. Have you heard of diversity, jobs? equity, and inclusion? and affirmative action, do these discriminate against women or against men? Diversity. DEI, diversity, equ it's diversity, equality, and inclusion. And then affirmative action. Does affirmative action benefit men? I don't or does know, it what benefit you just women? described sounds like it's trying to benefit everybody. No. No. You just said equality. It's leaning more towards women. It's it's feeding into trying to make everything equal, so they're trying to push more women and diversity. GMD Jim donated $69. I employ 80, mostly women. Men there before 5 a.m. Women show up around 7 to 8, leave by 4, will not stay late. Men don't leave until everything is finished which are more valuable to my company. You want to answer the, uh, you want to answer the question? That's those women. I know what I do at my job, and I stay until everything is finished. Sure. So that's those women. But if there were stats to show, for example, that men are more likely to work overtime, they're more willing to work longer hours, Ask for raises. So this is coming back to generalizing, and you're saying it's, it's not, wrong. No, there's statistics. But, it's not. Hold on. But it's not generalizing. If if there's literally statistics from like the Bureau of Labor Statistics or whatever other you know organization releases these kind of statistics, if it actually shows that men work more hours than women and they work longer hours than women and then they work more overtime and they work more over uh, hazard pay and they work, they're more likely to do uh, night shift, graveyard shift, which tends to be paid more, then how can you not come to the conclusion that men are going to be paid more under these circumstances? Because that's generalizing. You are it's generalizing. Not gen it's if you no, it is generalizing because statistically, yeah, that's higher. But earlier, when I was talking about statistics, you're talking about oh well, that's generalizing. That's discrimination. So I'm saying the same thing. When did thing I say that? Hours ago, when we were okay. talking about something else. So about, I'm talking about generalizing. You can't say that statistically because men do this more often that every man will do that. And you can't say statistically that because men, like women will do it less often that not a single woman is going to work the graveyard shift or work the overtime. Women can work. I'm not saying that women can't or don't do that. Okay. They're less likely to. But so when if you're hiring two people and you see same qualifications, you're going to hire the man because of the statistics. You don't think that's discriminatory? I, didn't, I did not say that's that. That's your argument. That's not my argument at all. I'm saying why at the end of the day it could be the case. There's many factors that, that re uh, relate to the uncontrolled gender pay gap, and those are a few of them. Also, I actually am not sure if there would actually be anything wrong if knowing these things about how men and women tend to work differently. What would actually be wrong with that? Because that's generalizing. And what we've would, come to the conclusion that generalizing is wrong. Let me ask it's, you a question. You run a factory. Okay. And in this factory, you need to carry 100 pounds from point A to point B throughout an entire eight-hour work shift. You know that men are going to be able to do that better. It's going to save you money if you hire men. Maybe you pay the men a bit more, but they're going to be able to do the job better. They're less likely to get injured if they do it. Who do you hire? Probably the man. Okay. You are but sexist. If, so How dare you? What there if are, a woman? There are no. strong, independent boss bitches. So that's what I'm about to say. So what if a woman comes up and she's in the same interview, interviewing for that job, and she says that she can do all of that? Are you just going to not believe her because she's a woman? If she can do it? Then fuck yeah, hire, hire her. her. Sure. So what's the argument? 
What's the argument from you? We are oh agreeing gosh, right now. Just... <laughs> you are arguing for nothing. We are literally in agreement. Oh, jeez. Okay. How about this? Last thing. Uh, I actually think part of this, if there even is a pay gap, it's women's fault. <laughs> Here's yes. why. Here's why. Okay. Here's why. Check this out. <laughs> So, let's say 50... Don't make me do all the talking right now. <laughs> yeah, let's hear from your friends. Okay. What percentage of women have her expectation that men should pay for first dates? Do you think it's 50%? I don't fucking know. I don't know. Well, let's, do you think like 50% of women are conservative women? No. No. 40%? Probably. Okay. Um, I don't know. Probably 30, 40 Let's say it's 40% of Depends women. Depends on the area. In sure. California, I would say it's a pretty low percentage. Let's say 40%. Well, let's the whole U.S. Let's say it's 40% of women are conservative. Of course, we have to grant that there's plenty of liberal women that still want men to be traditional and pay for first dates, <coughs> right? Not only that, they, not only do these women want men to pay for first dates, they want men to be providers, they're attracted to men who are successful and ambitious and all these, these things. So women's own sexual preferences and dating desires actually dictate that men will have more motivation to achieve, to become successful, because women place a mating pressure on men that men don't place on women. And so on this basis alone, I think it would explain away as supposed, again, I reject that there is a pay gap. It explains away the pay gap because of women, if it even exists, because women place a profound and significant mating pressure on men to be providers and to pay for first dates. Men are very motivated, well, both women and men are motivated by their romantic prospects. And if men can't get romance, they can't get a partner, they can't date, because they're not financially attractive to a woman, they can't pay for a first date, they're going to be zeroed out in the dating marketplace. Men don't zero out women because women don't pay for dates. Never happens. So it's women's fault <clears throat> because of the mating pressure women place on men for this supposed pay gap, which doesn't even exist, but just for the sake of argument, it's women's fault. Or is it just Checkmate. logical? Checkmate. So, once again, generalizing, not all women are uh, like that. Oh, hold on. Doesn't even matter. Even if it's a minority of women, even if it's 40% of women demands that men pay for first dates, that is such a significant amount of women as to make it a, I mean, 40%, right? Make, it would create a massive pressure on men to fall into the provider role. Because if they don't, they can't attract a woman. If they don't pay for a first date, they're not gonna get a second date. If they don't pay for dates, they're not gonna get laid. 